Recently, I had incredible conversations with these six legendary tennis players who've won a combined 236 national championships in age divisions ranging from the 35s to the 75s. My goal was to pick their brains and find out how in the world they were able to be so successful for so long and then copy their most effective strategies. After all, I just turned 41 myself, and if the last year of competitive tennis has taught me anything, it's that I have to have a plan if I'm going to stay healthy and strong as I get older. I didn't take it seriously at first, and I paid the price. As I talked to these legends, one thing kept coming up over and over again. They all credited that one thing for not only keeping the injury bug away, but also winning matches they wouldn't have otherwise. And it's not what you think. Nobody talked about adding power to their forehand or developing a wicked kick serve or anything like that. The insights they shared with me about this common denominator were totally against the grain and counterintuitive. Many of their habits and routines are exactly the opposite of what people assume they should be to master this part of the game. That part of the game that kept coming up over and over was fitness. Want to hear what these champions do that's so different, out of the ordinary, and effective? If so, click that like button and let's dive right into it. Because let's face it, you love tennis too much to have it bring you pain and failure instead of joy and success. It's important, at least for me, that I feel as if I'm not going to lose a match because I wasn't in shape. Because I feel as if that's one of the few things that you do control. You know, you get into a match, there are a lot of things you, you just simply don't control. And we all know that. I mean, just the obvious things like you can't control how hard the wind's blowing you know you can't control whether the court's a little slippery or you know those things but getting in shape is something that you do have some control over and so uh, i think that that's one factor that slants things in your favor this is such an empowering message from jimmy he's so right there are very very few things we fully control during a tennis match and one of them is our physical preparation but working out is long, hard, and takes up half the day, right? Wrong. Check out this strategy from Bob. In COVID, I think I learned that it's okay to not do a one hour workout. It's okay for me to break it up into like four 15 minute sessions. I'm still working out. I don't ever feel like when I'm working in the gym that I'm really getting that much endurance work. You know, within the muscle I am, but like, Overall endurance for me, I don't think it comes from being in the gym. So doing it for an hour straight doesn't seem to really improve my tennis endurance. I think tennis is where I get that. 15 minutes is something we can all do. And it's so worth it to feel better, play better, and lead a better quality of life. I've personally found that making the mental shift from thinking every workout has to be super hardcore to simply doing something for my fitness each and every day has freed me up so much to enjoy the process and be more consistent. Jimmy has found exactly the same thing to be true. Uh, and I'm compulsive enough that I have a uh, training sheet that has about 15 columns on it. Just on a daily basis, I like checking things off. And so I, I'll do stuff that I might not do otherwise. Like, you know, I don't feel like going to ride the bike today. Oh, well, I haven't done that for a couple of days. I need to check that off. And so I, I ride my bike or whatever. Nothing that I do is what you would call a kick butt workout. But everything that I do is designed for something that applies to the tennis court. And so I like doing that stuff. And I think that's one of the reasons why I've been able to continue through the age groups is it's not like I'm kind of saying, well, you know, I've got a tournament in about a month, so I've got to start doing stuff, you know, because I've been doing some stuff, you know, every day. So I'm never that far out of shape. And uh, the fact that I like doing the stuff that I'm doing, it makes me feel good. So uh, why wouldn't I do it? A powerful action step you can take right now is to write down four or five things you can do at home anytime without any special gear or equipment in 10 or 15 minutes and simply commit to doing one of those things every day. Over time, those small chunks will add up and before too long, you can develop into a formidable foe, just like Scott when he's dialed in. When, when I was doing that, I found that 
I could go out, and, and I'm talking in Nebraska, I could go out at 110 degrees and I could play for three hours. I would never wither, I wouldn't ever you know, succumb to the, to the temperature and fatigue and all that because I was in such great shape. And you know, it, it, it kind of manifested itself after a couple of years in tournaments where I was playing guys and you could see after an hour and a half you know, the, 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 the submission. I mean, it was, <laughs> yeah. it was it was like a submission move just to be standing up, You're slowly and choking you, the air yes. out of. Them. Oh yeah, and, and <laughs> when when I, you know, had that realization, it was kind of like, wow, this is this is such a powerful tool, you know, and it, it's been a, the, kind of like the the core of my, you know my existence on a tennis court is like, you gotta be fit. Hearing that sounds intimidating. Like you'd for sure need some kind of elaborate, super complicated workout plan and have to be at the gym all the time, right? Absolutely not. Here are Scott's suggestions for getting started and building your conditioning. To, like to people who don't really run, I would, I would say that, you know, start. Get out and, and, and jog at a, at a comfortable pace for, you know, 20 minutes and see how you feel. and you know, do it again and then maybe add a minute or two and, you know, yeah. build up to 30 minutes. And once you get to 30 minutes, see Scott before you know it, see if you can run faster. Honestly, it, it, it's not rocket science. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's all you're doing is the same thing over and over again, doing it a little bit harder, a little bit faster, and your, your body acclimates to it. And it's rewarding when you see improvement. Scott is talking about running specifically, but please know you can apply the very same mindset and strategy to absolutely anything. Jumping rope, planks, stationary bikes, sprints, box jumps, crunches, push-ups, pull-ups, and so much more can be started right now, today, in your home, just for 10 or 15 minutes, and start the ball rolling towards your best self on and off the court. Of course, don't forget, as you push yourself more and more, rest is just as important as training. I do think as we get older, that your rest days are as important as your uh, workout days. And I, I used to laugh at that. I always thought the harder you work, the better it's going to be. But I, I know now you, both your mind and your body need, need rest days. Otherwise you get stale, your legs get heavy, and then you're not getting the benefit of your practice sessions. So. The legends revealed so many practical ideas that I put into action immediately to help me move towards my best tennis today, tomorrow, and for the next 40 years to come. Now I have a concrete plan of attack, and I know so many other tennis players need one too. So I gathered everything I've learned over the last few years of trial and error, and combined it with the full legend interviews into an online system called Timeless Tennis. Go to www.timelesstennistraining.com now for full details so you can feel your best and play your best, no matter what your age.